The beloved sport of American football had its roots in the mid-1800s, when the first ever college game was between Rutgers and Princeton in 1869. The sport was inspired by two very popular English sports, both soccer, otherwise known as football, and rugby. Multiple other Northeastern colleges took up the sport as it gained popularity. The sport didn't become what it was until Walter Camp from Yale stepped in in the 1880s and made rule changes officially making it American football. Walter Camp introduced important modern parts of the game such as the line of scrimmage, the point system, the amount of players on each side, and the quarterback position. Walter Camp is known as the father of football. By 1920, college football has already been established as a successful entity, but there had not yet been a sustainable professional league. But a group of men such as Jim Thorpe, George Hallis, Ralph Hay, Frank Need, and several others got together in 1920 to form the APFA, the American Professional Football Association. The APFA wasn't a smash hit right out of the gate. It wasn't even the first professional league. Most of the teams were confined to small Midwestern industrial cities. The game was overshadowed by the college game, which was considered superior. The APFA's first season was so quickly forgotten in the collective sports memory that the league's official record books listed the 1920 championship as undecided until the 1970s. The season went on from September 26, 1920 to December 19, 1920. There were 14 teams when the league was formed, and there weren't as tight or strict schedules like there are today. There weren't any clear standings. Also, teams could play outside of their league, such as the Rochester Jeffersons, who mainly played teams from the New York Pro League. There wasn't a real championship game, but the Brunswick Bulk Calendar Cup was awarded to the Akron Pros, who went undefeated that season with an 8-0-3 record. There were also two one-loss teams, known as the Decatur Staleys, who went 10-1-2 and, and are also now known as the Chicago Bears, and the Buffalo All-Americans, who went 9-1-1. and The first championship didn't take place until 1933, when the Chicago Bears defeated the Portsmouth Spartans, now known as the Detroit Lions. The first ever All-Pro quarterback was a man known as John Patty Driscoll, a Pro Football Hall of Famer and a College Football Hall of Famer. He played for Northwestern in college and played in the MLB as an infielder for the Chicago Cubs. He then joined the U.S. Navy for World War I. After serving time in war, he joined the Great Lakes Navy football team and won the 1919 Rose Bowl. And this resume led him to become an All-Pro quarterback and head coach for the Chicago Cardinals and the Chicago Bears. Guy Chamberlain was also a player who made it into the Pro Football Hall of Fame and College Football Hall of Fame. He played college football at Nebraska Wesleyan University in 1911 and 1912, but transferred to Nebraska in 1913. He went undefeated twice for the Cornhuskers and won two consecutive Missouri Valley Conference Championships. In 1936, he was voted as the greatest player in Nebraska history. This story career at Nebraska led him to the Canton Bulldogs in 1919 and then to the Decatur Staleys in 1920. This is where he became an all-pro end for the first ever NFL season. Fritz Pollard is mainly known for being the first ever African American in the NFL. He was also regarded by Walter Camp as one of the greatest runners I've ever seen. He played college football at Brown and was also known as the first African American player there as well. And he also became the first African American to be on Walter Camp's All-American team. All of this led him to the Akron Pros where he led his team to an undefeated record and made the All-Pro team as a halfback. He became the head coach next season, and in 2005, he was posthumously inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. George Hallis is one of the most well-known figures in all of pro football. He played baseball and basketball at the University of Illinois. He then fought in World War I, and after that, he played football for the Great Lakes Naval Training Station. With this team, he became MVP of the 1919 Rose Bowl with his future teammate, Patty Driscoll. This led him to the Decatur Staleys. After the inaugural season with the Decatur Staleys, the owner of the team, Augusta Staley, gave control of the team to George Hallis. George Hallis relocated the team to Chicago and eventually made them the Chicago Bears. He would go on to be a Hall of Fame player and coach for the team. He's so iconic for this team, his initials are still in the Chicago Bears jersey to this date. 
what started as a regional mess of a league developed into one of the most prominent leagues in the world. Over the league's history, it created many iconic moments.